So recently I was in a live session where I was training some members of our WhatsApp job placement and training group and uh, one girl among them, um, her name is uh, Risha. She asked me a couple of questions and then finally asked, Sir, tell me, what exactly is the hidden truth which we don't know as a fresher but we should know when we are applying for companies and jobs in the biotech sector. So I smiled and said, okay, um, I think I'll have, I have many of them, so I should collate all of that in a video and I'll share with you. So this is in response to that question. And of course, for all of you who deserve to know this shocking truth. Now, you are sitting on the other side of the fence where you are willing to come in through a biotech company and work. But what exactly these biotech companies are thinking about you? That is something you should know. And many of you complain that the industry does not take freshers. What is the reason? If industry doesn't take the freshers, then how will they gain experience and all that? So I'm going to share uh, five to six uh, shocking truth, which is going to be eye-opener for all of you. And that will actually probably pave the way of your next steps, what you should be doing. Okay. First things first is industry is not taking freshers, not because you don't have experience. It is because they fear job stability. Okay. Because many of the freshers do not stay in the job for long. Okay. Just yesterday, we uh, placed a girl in a biotech company. She worked there for uh, 48 hours and then she left and uh, when I asked why did you leave after so much difficulty I had placed you there, she said uh, the work environment was suffocating. Now, by suffocating, she didn't mean the, you know, it was the AC was not running. She meant the work pressure, right? So you have to know this, that as a fresher, when you were working in a college, you were laid back attitude anytime you can enjoy walking to the class. But here in a company, there will be pressure. They're going to pay you money. They're go there's going to be pressure. And when freshers are exposed to such pressures, most of them melt down. Okay. And that is why industry doesn't hire freshers. So that is the one shocking truth you should know that if you during your interview somehow can convince the recruiter that even though you have you are a fresher, you are willing to dedicate long term into the company, you will be stable in the company and you are here to build a long term career, they will hire you. Okay. So that's the first truth. Job stability matters, not your experience, if, even if you are a fresher, if you can convince the recruiter that you're going to stay for long, they are going to take. Okay, that's a shocking truth number one. Now coming to shocking truth number two, and that is your technical skills matter less, but your communication skills and your adaptability matters more. Now you'll be like, how is that even possible? Yes, that's the truth. See, the first round will be the HR round, right? And uh, the reason why you will get rejected there is because of soft skills and communication skills and not technical skills, right? Because the HR, most of the time, they will come and say, Ki ye insan baat nahi kar sakta, ye team mein kaam kaise karega? So because in team, you have to work, you have to communicate effectively, right? If you cannot talk effectively, if you cannot uh, message your uh, views or opinion to the team, if you cannot uh, channelize that, then probably you cannot work as a team. And all the biotech things are not solo things. You have to work as a team, right? So soft skills are mandatory. Soft skills have got a higher weightage than your technical skills, okay? So communication skills, teamwork skills, adaptability, all that matters, okay? And that's where if, uh, if you don't have these, then you will go back thinking that this was probably not for you. But the truth is you have to adapt, okay? Now, shocking truth number three. Skills matter, degrees don't. Okay. So I'll tell you a story. So this question came from Rishai yesterday. So she said, sir, I have a microbiology degree with a very good dissertation and a lot of lab skills. While there is a PhD who has not so good research and not so great lab skills. Do you think the industry will prefer me on over him? My answer was yes. They will prefer you over him because degrees don't matter. Only when you get into try to get into the government jobs or government institutes, they're degree matters. Otherwise, for industry, skills matter. They're ready to hire a BSc guy. As long as they are, the, that guy is stable, has got the right uh, skill set and he can run the process. As simple as that. So, you have to understand the industry demand. What is the requirement? Is it molecular biology? Is it bioinformatics? Is it biochemistry? Is it microbiology? 
adapt that, learn that skill, do the hands-on, do the data analytical skills, and then have the practical experience of all of this, okay? It's not like, uh, okay, theory, you know, you need to have real-world experience. And that's what I keep telling my students at Biotechnica. Go for real-world hands-on, apart from data analytical skills as well as theory. All three are required, not just one. So that's where the, uh, I think, um, the third shocking truth which I told you is value of skills is more than your degree. So even if you are a PhD, you may get rejected. Even if you are MSc, you may get selected if you have the right skill set. And that is why so many students from Pan India as well as across the globe will take Biotechnica certification courses or internships. Yesterday, I had a student from Uganda. She is traveling on a um, you know, university funds and she's going to come to India. She will take training in IC incubated lab in Bangalore via Biotechnica and then she's going to go back and do her research. So people from out of India, Croatia, Ukraine, they are coming to India to take hands-on training. And here you are not taking. So that will not help. Okay. So that's the shocking truth number three. Now, truth number four, the industry does not want outstanding, exceptional people. Okay. So even if you are not a topper, your chances of getting higher days higher than the topper, okay? So, for example, you are, average, you are an average student with average skill set, but yeah, you are pretty much manageable, right? You can work under stress, you can work under pressure, and you are ready to adapt to the situation, you are ready to adapt to their requirements, then the industry will hire you. So, they're not looking for outstanding toppers, remember? So, even if you are not a topper, good news, the industry will hire you. So don't think that if you, you have less uh, marks in the college, the industry won't hire you. Yes, they will hire you. They're looking for you. Okay. So, but again, whatever I said, all the previous points are equally valid. Okay. Next one. Next shocking truth. And that is many of you think that if I negotiate harder during the interview, I may get a higher salary. The truth is no, they will not. See, this guy who is walking into the room to take your interview has been told by his manager that this is the range in which you have to bring this salary, okay? So if the candidate demands more salary, reject him because the company has a limited budget, okay? Now, even if you are exceptional, they may not go beyond 30% above the budgetary limitation. So even if suppose uh, the, the salary which was uh, fixed just at 50,000, you demand 80,000 or you demand 1 lakh, they will not give because they have made up their mind that they're going to give 50,000. They may go to 60, 65, not beyond 65, right? So that is where the salary budgeting is already done even before. So match is fixed. It, they're just looking for who can be the batsman, okay? The match is fixed. The score is fixed. But who can be the batsman, they're just looking for. So don't negotiate hard during the salary. Just be soft. Say, okay, this is my expectation. And if that matches, you will be the batsman, okay? And this debate always continues, skill versus degree, right? So you have to know this, that... You need to have valuable skills, which is needed in the industry. You have to understand the market demand accordingly, customize the CV, have those skills which the company needs and adapt according to the industry changes. They demand you to come to Himachal Pradesh, do it. If they want you to come to Bangalore to do the job, do it. You will have to relocate because the company is not in your backyard. It is in the other, another city, right? If you can move out of your house for a uh, degree, you had to go out of your house, right? Did the university come inside your house? No, right? So the job will not come inside your house. They will be in some di remote distant part of India, okay? Uh, just to give you an example, I have a cancer research company which is in Bangalore, but it is not in Bangalore. It is 57 kilometers away from Bangalore. The reason why they did to took it is best known to them, but they're 57 kilometers away. So if you want to be in the city, you cannot work there, right? So these things you should know. Next is recruitment priorities, okay? Let's understand that you have your own priorities, but the company has their own priorities, right? The more realistic you are with your demands, the lesser misconceptions you have, and uh, the more industry insights you have, and you obviously you will have because you are uh, listening to Biotechnica's uh, YouTube channel and uh, various other platforms. So yeah, you will have the industry insights. Your chances of getting hired is higher. But remember that the value lies beyond degrees. The value lies beyond college. The value lies where learning begins and that is immediately after your college. Once the college ends, work on your skills. Recognize your potential employers and start looking at what kind of jobs they are posting. And reverse engineer if you can have those skills. If you have those skills, definitely you will be in demand and 
you'll get hired. So just, uh, I think uh, 15 minutes from now, I'm going to meet again the WhatsApp job placement and training uh, students who are, and I'm placing them also simultaneously as they are trained. So if you want to be a part of that, you can always click the link in the description and become a part of our WhatsApp group. But apart from that, uh, whether you join or not, doesn't matter. My best wishes and blessings are always with you. I want to make sure that every individual in the sector gets placed with the right opportunities. But if you have misconceptions and lack of skills, well, that can ha cannot happen. So I hope you, this video was useful to you. Let me know in the comment section if you have any more questions or queries. I will try to address them textually or maybe in the next video. Thank you so much. Keep shining. Bye-bye.